Sonic. Lab. TV. So uh, this is a special kind of Sonic Lab episode. I'm here with Dave Spears of G4 Software, but we're actually looking at Isotope Iris. Now, why is that, Dave? Can you explain your involvement? Well, I was involved in the very early stages and also in the, uh, some of the sound design. Uh, in effect, I used RX and RX2 for a film project to do some sound design and, I, and actually uh, approached um, Isotope and suggested that it be turned into uh, an instrument. So uh, what we're looking at here is you're running this on, uh, what, just a regular MacBook Pro? Yep. We're in Logic, right? Yes, so we're in Logic and I'm going to launch it as an audio unit. This is it in its raw state. So essentially, you can regard this as a kind of canvas, in effect, a blank canvas, on which you can throw any audio file, and then from there, you can go in and edit various things. There is a global section up here, which you can reveal. That contains a raft of patches in a raft of different styles. Uh, over here, you have the synth section, and this is fairly elementary. Obviously, you're throwing samples at the pool, or the audio pool, so from there you've got coarse, fine-tune, all of the kind of usual things you would expect and control over the envelopes and LFOs and things like that. And then you can open up a tool section here, which you would use for selecting parts of the spectrogram, which we'll look at in a minute. And then finally, you've got a keyboard section down here. But in, in essence, we've got four audio pools. So three of those you can put anything you want in. Uh, so just regard those as kind of three oscillators. And then the final one is a, is a sub. And this is kind of used to sort of galvanise the sound. In effect, what we've got is a load of um, Mo samples and, you know, real kind of low bottom end. Because when you select various harmonics, sometimes things can kind of get outside of the fixed pitch realm. And you need something to kind of draw everything back in. And that's your reference. So if we just click on, let's say we're using pool one here, and I always refer to it as a pool, which might not technically be correct, but in effect, because you can throw anything into a pool and you look at the ripples. So you can load a sample in either by dragging and dropping it onto the um, canvas, or in this case, oh, I don't know, we like our trons, so I will select, uh, it's actually an Optican Choir. So what you can see here are the various harmonics isolated or highlighted in the lighter tones. Now there's a couple of modes here as well. We can re-trigger so every time we play a new note, it'll start from the beginning of the sample. And you can see the second playhead of the second note. Or we can turn the re-trigger off so it'll continue where the previous playhead got to. So is there a limitation on voices? Because, I mean, obviously this is going to be, there is going to be a CPU limitation. It's doing yes. some pretty clever stuff here, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, and again, that depends. At the minute we're in kind of resample mode, so obviously the higher up the keyboard you play, the more munchkinized it's going to become. Now, there is a special mode that alleviates that, but that will uh, use Cleans up quite a, a lot of CPU, yeah. So here, all I'm doing is just selecting that kind of lower harmonic, and then we would play that back. Oh, nice. But what I could also do is go in and add, let's say, let's eliminate this harmonic here that's around kind of 600. Let's take the one above that. And then we could take it further up. So in effect, we've got here three bands up that encompass four harmonics. From there, we can go in and we can shape the envelope, we can retune it, we can add LFOs, all sorts of things. We can erase using the tool. So this is very much like Photoshop. So using the yeah, tools. Yeah, it's being said, hasn't it? That it's kind of like a Photoshop for sound, essentially. Yeah, and that was kind of part of the vibe. It was like, you know, you've got the ability to erase parts of the spectrogram and, you know, add certain parts or just select certain things. So, for example, here, one of the things I really love is if I go back to the... So this is the basic sound. Using the lasso tool, we can just draw, you know, you could write your name in it. So I'm just kind of squiggling in that. And that is our selection. Wow. So you can get these really evolving textures out of something which is pretty lo-fi to, to begin with. So, um... <laughs> T tell me a little bit more about the synthesis features and, and, and that side of it, because obviously we're hearing a lot of filtering going on there effectively. I mean, presumably there's other stuff that can be done with it post that as well, right? Yeah, so in effect you can layer up three of these plus the sub, which will galvanise, which will, like I said before, help galvanise the bottom end. But if we just take this pool in its raw state, so if we just take that section, 
we can loop that, we can loop it forward, we can loop it backwards. And then you've got the kind of essential synth section over here. We can change the tuning of that as you would expect on any sampler. Fine tune, gain, the pan, and then we get into the whole envelope selection. So if we take the beginning off, and then we add a sort of lengthy release. And then there are other things like, for example, with the LFO. So this is just a pitch LFO. But we could assign that to amplitude, or we could assign it to pan. One of the things I really like doing, I mean, it's a simple synth trick, uh, keep it to pitch, but assign it to, a, uh, let's say, a square wave. You can obviously sync the um, LFO rates. Uh, is it limited? Is, are these synthesis functions limited to the kind of pitch side of things, or are there other aspects like filter and what have you? Or is all the filtering handled in the actual spectrogram? Yeah, side the filtering's pretty much handled within the spectrogram. But once you've built up your three audio pools and you have a sound that you kind of think, okay, I want that, but actually uh, it needs refining, there is another section which is a kind of which is within our mix section here, and this is a really, really beautiful kind of loudness limiter, just kind of really compresses that sound uh, beautifully. And then you've got a global filter. So that you can use that to kind of shave the top end, you know, the highs off the top end a little bit and just kind of really get it's it good. spread so nice and evenly. What, what are the strengths? I mean, is there a strength to operating in such a visual fashion? I mean, do you find that you can kind of translate your head to the sound much more easily? Or, I mean, how does that kind of work? I think so. I mean, one thing that I really, really enjoyed about working with RX is that because of the spectrogram aspect of it, you can kind of climb in between the harmonics and you can take stuff that... We get so used to looking at a normal ampli amplitude waveform. And the fundamental. And yeah, and it becomes kind of, oh, you know, I can tell that that's rhythmic and actually my start point should be there. Whereas within the spectrogram, uh, you just look at things in a very different way. And I think that can lead to some more creative choices. You can also layer it. I mean, as I'm showing here, you can also impose the normal amplitude waveform over it. So you can see that we've just got between these points selected here and then when I just move that slider. And that's really useful for finding good loop points and mm. things like that. Once you've done that, there's a load of cross, there's a crossfade function that you can draw in your own crossfade. And then when we go back, you can see that we've got the crossfade sections there. So is it possible for you to just sort of build something on the fly for us? Yeah, let's try something like that. I mean, obviously I'm gonna fall into certain patterns because these are things that I like. So let's say, for example, we looked at the um, Optical Choir before, and I am just going to select that purely because actually I love it as a sound. But also, like I said before, it's a really good way of being able to take and very easily see and move in real time and hear. And what I really like is taking two, let's say two of the harmonics. So I'll take those two. That's in pool two, and then in pool one, I will very quickly, let's take something else synth-wise. So synthetic, uh, I do love the Prophet T8 stuff. So let's take a fat and wide on there. So again, I'm just taking a C2. And you can see that most of the work is down here in the bottom region. So let's just solo that. the two and then I can very quickly balance those so that's really really simple uh, let's take some noise for example that's quite neat uh, or maybe just some vocal stuff let's try this uh, Tara actually gave us some really lovely uh, resynthesis resynthesized Ta vocals. Tara Bush yeah, yeah. So although this is in A, I can change the root note there to C. That's pretty straightforward. Let's just take certain parts of that. So you've got that kind of airy sound. And then obviously the thing I would do then is just go in, 
to the mix section, select uh, master effects, use a little bit of limiting compression so, you, so it's got a little bit of punch. Say, so turn the reverb on. Then I could link those sounds. Slow the attack. Add a little bit of distortion. I love their tube thing, so actually what I'd do is take the tone right down on that. By moving, mucking around with the tone, you can actually hone in on certain parts of those harmonics. And then finally, I would use a global filter, like I explained before. You know, there's a warm synth here. We've got, you can either use that with an envelope, but in this case, I'll just use it static. And that just kind of cleans up those. An instant uh, ethereal pad. minutes but really sweet again you see here we've got a bow double bass we've got uh, a strings in C we've got six um, six violins with vibrato and then we've got a side Oh, that's lovely. I mean, is it possible um, that you can repurpose your entire sample library then? Basically, if you've got a load of, you know, multi-sampled instruments dotted around the place, you can bring this stuff in and just remake it into something kind of completely different. Yeah, and that's kind of half the vibe. I mean, although there's a, we provided a library with it and actually I spent ages uh, sorting that library out, half of it is just use your own sounds and take your own sounds somewhere else. And that's actually what I've been preaching to most of the people who I've put it in front of when I've put it in front of a few name artists. It's really to take sounds that they've been working on and just to take them in a completely different else. direction. Yeah. So what uh, file formats does it read in terms of samples? Uh, we have an eighth. We have an eighth. Yeah. So could you put your entire mix into it? Yeah, yeah, if necessary, if that's what you wanted to do. In fact, that was the first question that somebody asked me um, when they got hold of the copies, actually I'm working on a remix for, I forget who it was, can I do that? And it's like, yep. And in effect, you've got kind of infinite filtering on it. So you could isolate elements of a mix and just kind of extract them almost. Yep. Interesting. Yep. And actually you could spread different, but you could take that same mix and spread it over three pools and then isolate different harmonics from different parts. So you can build up some pretty complex things. So um, let's have a listen to a few more sounds if we may. Yeah, I mean, obviously it excels at pads. Quite nice, very sweet. Let's just try a few at random. Old future pad. So I mean, let's just take, uh, let's just try one more. Peering through fog, let's try that one. Am I hearing effects on this as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, obviously I'm a big fan of the isotope effects. So for you've got a choice. You've got insert effects or master effects. So if you use the insert effects, you can send, say, reverb to one of the pools and not to the others. That's really nice for kind of getting pretty unique textures, or you just go for the master effects, in which case that just slings whatever on all of them. So we're talking what, uh, reverb, delay, time-based effects as well, chorus and compression, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, in effect four. So in this section, this gives you the, this is like the mix window for all of the sounds that we have. So here we could, for example, let's just take that sound before. So we could link all of these pools via the link, there and then any changes I make to this envelope will affect all of them. With the effects you can see here that we're in uh, master mode so there's reverb here, delay, chorus and distortion and then if I wanted to turn any of those on I would just turn them on in there and then I can add the amount down there. 
So you could just presumably just MIDI learn that stuff and kind of assign various parameters as you wish, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's the most sane thing to do because there are just so many parameters on here. 128 is not enough. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, a couple more sounds and then I, I think we're probably about uh, done for time-wise. Sure. Let's have a uh, Japanese slot machine for something incredibly bizarre. So, pull one, pull two, just those two pulls are active on this. Now, where are you going to get sound design? Like Actually, that one elsewhere? question, can you randomise the loop so it almost becomes like granular? Is that possible? No. Ah, maybe something for a future update. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Lotus Breath, I mean, we are in the experimental phase here, so let's just check out. It's pretty mega. Lovely. Pretty mega. If we go for some... I can imagine, I mean, sound designers are going to love this because you can effectively take visual elements from, you know, TV or film and incorporate them, uh, you know, the sound of them into it, which, you know, philosophically, sound design and arty people are going to love all of that, aren't they? Yeah, but good for the kind of uh, movie execs. Yeah. We can take this frame and we can... OK, let's see how that sounds. Right. We can take this piece of audio from this person's voice and we can extract, you know, you can extract parts of it and move it around and create a sound out of that. I found this amazing sound purely by accident. I put some of the, um, it was part of the whole, you know, 70s and 60s space race stuff and it was just the astronauts talking to each other. I'll just put elements in that. By the time you lay it over a pad, take just some, some of the harmonics out, you can get these really, really beautiful textures really easily. So tell me, I mean, you know, where we've been very conscious of the fact that there's, you get into modular time when you're working with modular synthesizers where you just think, oh, was that the whole day gone? I mean, is this one of those things that is a bit of a time black hole or is it faster because of the visual aspect? It can be either. Honestly, it can be either. I have lost days in this just going, oh, hang on, how, how about that? Yeah, let's try that. But in some ways, and this is why I kind of hark back to the thing about using your own sounds, you'll have an idea of what you want to achieve from your own sounds with the sounds that are here, as good as they are. You can get lost in, where can I take these? But if you've got an idea in your head as to what you want to do with your sound, you can achieve it really quickly. Otherwise, you can get lost for days just having fun, really. <laughs> Excellent. So it's worth mentioning there is a 10-day demo that you can download that's free, fully functional, right? Yep. Fully functional. You can get that from isotope.com and you can then just, you know, go crazy with it. Do you get the entire sound library when you download that as well? No, no. The uh, the big, big, I think it's four gig sound library. Um, you so you just, you get, oh, so the, when you download the application and then you can just put your own sounds into it. Is that the way? That yeah, and it uh, comes with a selection of sounds just to kind of get you started and patches and stuff like that. I think this, what I've been showing today is just the kind of very elementary line. So you can get it now. It's on special offer, I think, till the end of the month uh, for $149 with the four gig sound library. Uh, it goes up to 249 at the end of that offer period. And then there's the sort of X2 uh, or plus two library, which adds, uh, is it wood and glass? Yeah, yeah. Which kind of increases that. And I think the the finalist price on that is two nine nine, if I remember correctly. Okay. Anyway, Dave, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.